Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Good. <laughs> Mia, why are you facing there? It's over here. Oops. <laughs> My chair is sinking. <laughs> okay. Good morning. So today is, uh, well, September 2nd already. It's a Wednesday. September 2nd. What's going on? Yeah, my seat is sinking. Well, never mind. It's okay. I'll just... September 2nd. Okay, so today we're going to do... We're going to comment on two Gospels that are actually... Well, a continuation practically of uh, two days of Gospel readings. Yesterday and today. Uh, we didn't do a commentary yesterday, so we're going to include yesterday's commentary to today's because anyway, they are a continuation <clears throat> and they, they, they talk about some similar things. So anyway, let's start by reading the gospel of yesterday, uh, which is going to be really the main basis of this commentary. So Jesus went down to, uh, by the way, it's taken from St. Luke chapter 4. Verses 31 all the way to 44. Okay, the two Gospels put together. So Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching. Because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with a spirit of of an unclean demon. Okay. And he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. The demon threw the man down in front of them, came out of him without doing him any harm. And this whole story continues, uh, the, the gospel for today. And today we are brought to the house of uh, Simon, Peter, St. Peter. So after he taught in the synagogue, they retreated in the house of Simon Peter, okay, where his mother-in-law, mother-in-law of Simon Peter, was sick. Okay, just a parenthetical comment here. Uh, many times people use this gospel to talk about the apostles being married, right, and to justify uh, married priests in the church because they said, well, Peter was married. Okay, uh, well, what's the proof? He had a mother-in-law. Okay, but the question is, was he married at the time that Jesus called him to be an apostle or was he already a widower? See, the fact that you have a mother-in-law doesn't mean to say you are married currently. Right? He could have been married a few years back and his wife died. He still has a mother-in-law. Right? So <clears throat> it doesn't mean to say that he was married at the time that he was called by Jesus to be an apostle. But anyway, there's really no proof either way. <clears throat> but anyway, so Jesus cured the mother-in-law. And then he also cured many other people. Who were brought to him there in the house of Simon when of course the neighbors already realized he was there so they brought people to him and demons also came out from many shouting you are the son of God you are the son of God they all acknowledged all the demons acknowledged Jesus Jesus of Nazareth, we know, I know who you are. Okay? 
You are the Holy One of God. You are the Son of God. The Holy One of God, meaning you came from God. The Son of God, well, just defines all the more what the Holy One of God means. Right? He's not only somebody who came from God, but actually has the relationship of filiation with God. That he's actually the Son of God. So these are very important theological, God bless you, very important theological truths that even the devil knows that even these demons that possessed these people knew of Jesus, right? They could not deny it. It was undeniable that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and they knew it. But what's interesting here is this question of the first possessed man. He says, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? What have you to do with us? In other words, why can't you just mind your own business, Jesus? Hey, leave me alone, right? Mind your own business. Well, what's your business meddling with me? What is your business <laughs> with me? <laughs> I don't know how, how else we, we can paraphrase that, right? This demon was... Trying to tell Jesus, stay away from me. Get out of my life. I'm enjoying my demonic possession here. <laughs> I am having fun committing all the sins that, uh, that, I am, that I'm doing. I'm having fun, uh, you know, living a, a, a wasteful life here. Without any purpose, without any direction. I'm just having fun. I just want to satisfy my own pleasures. I just want to do my own thing. And it's fun. So what have you to do with me, Jesus? Be gone. Get lost. I don't need you in my life. Many times, we react like this devil. Without us realizing it, many times we say the same thing to Jesus. When Jesus tries to bring us back to the fold, when Jesus tries to communicate His will to us through our parents, through our bishops or clerics or whoever are the instruments of God that He put beside us in this journey of life, Many times we ignore them and we tell them to take a hike and leave us alone. Right? Many times we react like this when we don't obey. Many times we react like this when we don't do what we're supposed to do and only do what we like to do. Many times we shut Jesus out of our lives. Especially when we commit mortal sin. We react like this devil. Right? What have you to do with me? Get out. But Jesus has a lot to do with us. Yes, it is Jesus' business, business to mind our business. Yes, he has every right to get involved with our lives. Why? Why? Because he wants to get rid of that devil in us so he can dwell in our souls. He wants to tell that devil in us, get out of the man, get out of there. Because that is my rightful place. I am the one who's supposed to be reigning in that heart, in that soul. I, Jesus, am the one supposed to be there. So get out of there. 
That's what he's telling the devils. The question is, are we? Are we cooperating with Jesus? Are we cooperating or are we rebelling? Are we allowing Jesus to take the devil out of us so he can reign in our souls? Or are we just, are we cooperating with the devil rather than cooperate with Jesus? Okay. Whose side are we on? Whose side are we on? Are we friends of the devil and continue and want to be friends with the devil? Or do we want to be friends with Jesus and let Jesus reign in our hearts? It is a question we need to ask ourselves. Right? Because Jesus wants to reign in our hearts. And why does Jesus want to reign in our hearts? Because he wants to transform us into his image and likeness. He wants us to be like Him, the Son of God. Because we are children of God by virtue of our baptism. <clears throat> the question is, are we acting and behaving according to the dignity we had received of being children of God? <clears throat> or are we living our lives as though we are children of the devil. See? If we live our lives like we were children of the devil, we are being inconsistent with our nature. Because by virtue of our baptism, we have been made children of God. So our nature has been transformed to that of being divine in a way. Because we participate in the divine uh, uh, family of God. We have been made children of God. Now Jesus wants to reign in our soul so that we can be transformed into His image. So that God the Father would recognize in us His Son, Jesus Christ. Right? So that God the Father would deal with us like He deals with His own Son. Because that's what we are. We are children of God. Now are we living up to that dignity? It is a royal, divine dignity. That you can walk up to anybody, chin up and say, I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. I belong to the kingly family of God. But if we don't allow Jesus to reign in our souls, if we shut the door to Him, and instead of Him, we allow the devil to take the better of us, to possess us, and to, and to let Him manipulate us and reign our lives, then we end up ruining our lives. We end up ruining <clears throat> our souls. And we end up disinheriting heaven. Okay? We end up forfeiting our relationship with God the Father. And we become children of the devil. So let's, let's keep this in mind. Let's keep this in mind, right? Jesus has every business. Jesus has every right and every business to mind us, to mind what's going on with us. The question is, will we allow Him? Will we allow Him to actually help us stamp out this devil stamp out, throw out this demon and the many little demons that possess us in our everyday lives, all the temptations that we, that we uh, uh, succumb to, all the um, bad tendencies that we, we tend to give in to, all of those are the little demons. Do we allow Jesus to help us to get rid of all of those? 
so that he might reign in our souls? Or do we want to wallow in the possession of the devil? So these are decisions we need to make. And we know, we know how to turn the tide here, right? We know how to reverse this. We know how to make Jesus reign, right? That is by living in the state of grace, being sincere in all our confessions and contrite and, and, and be penitential, right? To obey our parents and obey authority when they are telling us the truth. Right? Live the virtues that you have been taught from childhood. Live your faith, know your faith, live your faith. Those are the ways by which we allow Jesus to reign in our souls. How consistent are we in doing all that? Because when there's no consistency, then we're opening the door to the devil. But when we are consistent in living up to all of those things, then we are allowing Jesus to reign in our souls. Okay, that's it for us. Hello, Ava. Hi. Ava is awake and having a big slice of bread. Uh-oh. He has bread. That's right. Hey, bread. Huh? Can we show you here, Ava? Eva, can we show you here? Where is your piece of bread? There. Where? Come on, take a bite. Take a bite, Eva. There. Look at that. <laughs> okay. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day, everybody. We hope to see you tomorrow again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.